Uh, we're talking direct variation today, which deals directly with our proportions. And you'll see that in a second. So first of all, direct variation is in the form y equals kx, y equals kx. And we'll talk about what that k means in just a second. Or it could look like this, y divided by x is k. And that's important because in order to solve for k, which we'll talk about what that is, we would take y divided by x. Okay, so let's just look here for a second. So for direct variation, x and y are directly proportional. So we would say that they vary directly. That's where the word direct variation comes from. They vary directly. They're directly proportional. And k we call the constant of variation. So k is the constant of variation, and that's important. So that's really also like our rate of change in a way. Or when we see it on a graph, you'll find out that's our slope, right? Remember the number that's in front of the x? Like we can see right up here, the number that's in front of the x is always the slope. Yeah. So the k is the constant of variation, rate of change, our slope, and we say that things vary directly, they're directionally proportional. Well, what does that really mean if something's directly proportional? Well, that just means, an example in real life would be, like, the hungrier I get, the more I eat. So, for example, my hunger is going up, so the amount I eat goes up. They're directly proportional. They relate, right? One's not going up and the other's not going down. They both go up or they both go down. So when we look at those on a graph, as the x value increases, what happens to the y value? Well, let's look at our graph of y equals 3x. So as my x gets bigger this way, what happens to my y? Yeah, it's also increasing, right? So as the x increases, y values increase. What happens as the x decreases? I can look at this purple graph now, or even the red one as well. So as the x's are getting smaller, what's happening to the lines? Yeah, they're going down further. They're decreasing. So as the x decreases, y values decrease. So they're consistent with each other. That's why they vary directly. So we're going to use this equation, y equals kx. That's important. And remember, to solve for k, we simply divide the y divided by the x. Oh, one quick point here, too. Direct variation always goes through a certain point. If you notice, all direct variation equations are going to go through the origin. Every single one of them goes through the origin. And why is that? Well, if you think back, if you're familiar with slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, well, guess what? The m and the k are the same thing, right? We just talked about that. Well, there's no plus b. There's no y-intercept. So what do you think the b is? It's really plus zero over in this case, right, if it doesn't exist. So the y-intercept is zero. So where's the, where's the y-intercept at zero? Yeah, it's right at the origin. So that's why every single direct variation goes to the origin in that case. All right, so now it says find a direct variation equation of the table. When, and whenever we're dealing with direct variation, we know we're using y equals kx. And in order to write an equation for it, we need to find k and plug it in. We need to find what k is. Well, we just talked about this. What are we going to do for k? How do we solve for k when they vary directly, when there's direct variation? Well, you take the y divided by the x. And it should work for every single case. Well, I should just check and make sure this is direct variation, first of all. So as my x's increase, as I go from 2 to 3 to 7 to 12 to 15, what are happening in my y's? Yeah, they increase as well, don't they? Okay, so that's good. So as x increases, y increases. I might even put that over here. They're both things, so I know that's direct variation. And then to find the k, we just take y divided by x. Well, let's just grab two of them right here. So let's go to find k. I would take 10.5 divided by 3, and that would give me 3.5. Right? I might even double check just a couple more just to make sure. So I got my calculator out. I'm going to try a few more. I'm just going to go with an easier one here. So see if that equals as well. 7 divided by 2, that gives me 3.5. Good. Let's do one more. Just even be like super safe. I'll just grab this guy. 52.5 divided by 15. So 52.5 divided by 15. Type that into my calculator. And there we go. Yep, 3.5. So it checks out. So k is 3.5. So to write the equation, all I do is I use my direct variation. 
and I plug in the k. So I say y equals 3.5x, and I'm done. Okay, and we'll look at a, a real life example to show why that's helpful to have that. So all you gotta do is find the k and plug it in. It says given the equation d equals 63r, fill in the missing values. So that's our dirt formula. Distance equals rate times time. In this case, the time is being written first, time times the rate. So 63 is our time. And I think about it, what's happening here? We're taking the rate times 63 to equal our distance, right? So the ones that I'm given the rate, that's nice and easy. I just multiply by 63. So I can do that and get my answer. So I just type those into a calculator, get my new distances. Well, how do I go the opposite way? Now, if I'm given the distance, how would I find the rate? Well, we multiply to get the distance. So what do you think we would go to go backwards? Hopefully you can tell that you just divide, right? Instead of multiplying. So we should divide by 63. And that should make sense. If I am given the distance, in this case, I'm given that the distance is 2142. That goes in for D. So how would I solve for R over here? Yeah, we're multiplying by 63. Throws the inverses divide by 63. And that would be the same thing right here. We would divide by 63. So I won't finish that out, but just get an understanding of how to use a direct variation equation to solve either way. You're either multiplying or dividing by that constant of variation. What if it gives you suppose y varies directly with x? Well, when it says that, if y varies directly with x, varies directly just tells you we can use direct variation. That's our y equals kx. And it even asks you, write a direct variation equation. Well, that's right here. We just need to find the k to write one. And then in the end, it says solve. Okay, the solve is going to deal with this last piece right here. So we're going to hold off on that piece for now. And I'm just going to deal with my first part. If y equals 80 when x equals 16, I want to write my direct variation equation. So I'm going to write my y equals kx first. So how do I solve for k? Can I just solve for k really quickly? Sure, I could plug in this information and then look to solve for k, but we already know how to solve for k, right? What do we do? We divide y divided by the x. So what's my y? 80 divided by the x, which is 16. So what would k equal? That's right, it'd be 5. So k equals 5, but it wants me to write the equation for it. So remember, Looking back up top, y equals kx, I need to plug in for the k. So I'm going to say y equals 5x. There's my equation. That's one of the answers, y equals 5x. Now let's use that equation to solve for x when y is 200. So I'm going to write my equation again, y equals 5x. And now I'm going to plug in that 200 in for y. So 200 equals 5x. So how would I solve for x here? Yeah, we're multiplying by 5, so the inverse is divide by 5. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. 5's cancel, and that would give us 40. So there we go. So make sure, find the k first so you can write the equation, and then worry about that second part to find x when y is 200. So take it step by step. All right, so let's take a look at how we can use this. It says, market A sells 7 years of corn for $1.25. Market B sells a baker's dozen, 13 years of corn, for $2.75. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a table of values, X and Y values. And I'm going to say X is for the ears of corn. And I'm going to say Y stands for the cost. Y stands for the cost. So my first situation, I'm going to do it for each market too. So this is going to be market A. And then I'm going to use green for market B. I'm going to make a table for each. So it was seven years of corn. It costed $1.25. If I double that and go to 14 years of corn, I should double my amount of money and get $2.50. I'm going to do one more. 21, and that would be $3.75. Okay, I'll do the same thing for my baker's dozen. So 13 years for $2.75. I'm going to double that to 26, and that gives me $5.50. Now I'm going to jump 13 more to 39 years of corn, and that puts me at 8.25. Okay, so now it says write an equation for each. Well, how am I going to write an equation? Shouldn't these vary directly? 
Because think about this, every time I go up seven here, I'm going up $1.25 every time. I go up seven, I'm going up $1.25, right? That's consistent. And same thing here, these are pretty consistent. So how would I write an equation? Right, they vary directly, don't they? As like my ears of corn increase, my cost is increasing. So that's our y equals kx. So I need to write an equation for each. So for market A, I better solve for k first, right? So how do I get that k? That's right, you divide y divided by x. So I'm just going to grab one of them, and I'm going to grab the first one. And I'm going to take 1.25. And I'm going to divide that by 7. Take the y divided by the x. So what would k equal in this case? Yeah, it's about, point, it's about 0 0.18 when I round. So to write my equation, I'd say y equals 0.18x, right? y equals kx. Good. And then i got to do the same thing for market b. So to find my k, I divide the y divided by the x. I'm just going to grab the top one. That's fine. So 2.75 is the y divided by 13 for x. And k would equal about 0.21. So my equation is y equals 0.21x. Okay, now let's use this to see if this helps us. It says if you wanted to buy only one ear of corn, how much would each market charge you? Well, I bet we could tell by our equation. So market A would charge us. I could plug in. 1 for x, right, for the ear of corn. Well, 1 times 0.18 is 0.18, isn't it? So it charges us 18 cents. And to think about this, when I divided that 125 divided by 7, didn't I find it was 125 for 7? So when I divide them, that's like the unit price. So it's like 18 cents per ear of corn. So I should be able to tell market B pretty easy knowing that would be 21 cents. So there we go, 0.21. So it's a little cheaper for the market A. And lastly, it says, how can you tell from the graphs which market is the cheaper place to buy corn? Well, let's take a look. Let's go graph these guys. Since I wrote them in terms of Y and X, I can actually graph these on my calculator. So if you have your graphing calculator, pull that out, and let's take a look here. All right, so in order to graph, we have this equation editor, Y equals right here. So I'm going to click on this equation editor. I already got my two equations typed in, but I'm going to retype one of them so you can tell how to do it. So if both of these were blank, I want to do my first equation, this y equals 0.18x. So I already have my y equals, you could do the zero point, that's fine, or just point, 18x. Well, no, don't hit x the times button, and don't use this green x, that's an alpha, that's like a letter x. We want the variable x. Well, this calculator has a built-in button right here, this x, t, theta, n. These are all variables. So I'm going to click that, and it should give me a variable x. There we go. And then i got to do the same thing, 0.21 times x, good. And then in this window selection, i got to make sure my window fits my data. So x's, what do my x's stand for again? Let's go look. That's the number of ears of corn, good. So... I'm going to start with zero ears of, ears of corn. I can't have negative ears of corn, so I'll start with zero. And I'm going to just look at like the first uh, 20, maybe 25. It doesn't matter, something like that. 25 ears of corn. That's count. And then this X, SCL means X scale. So that means what do you want to count by? Well, let's count by fives. That seems pretty good, right, if we're going up to 25. I don't want to count by ones. That's the, that'd be make 25 dashes, right? I don't want 25 dashes. So let's count by fives. Why, men? We're not going to have negative money, right? This is the cost for our ears of corn. And then Y max, you know, how much does our corn end up costing in the end? You know, it doesn't really get more than like five to 10 bucks. So either five or 10 is, is good right in there. And then let's see Y scale. I can count by one. That's fine. X res resolutions, one good. This should automatically calculate. So you don't need to worry. And now we want to go ahead and graph it. So there's my first one. And there's my second one. So this first one, would have been the y equals 0.18x. So we can tell that that graph's a little bit lower, so its cost isn't increasing as much. So that means just by looking at the graph, I can tell that market A is cheaper as well. And technically, I wouldn't have really needed to do that, but we want to look at how to graph these guys. So we will say that market A. There we go. So just looking a little bit into direct variation. Tomorrow we'll look in the opposite way and look at inverse variation.